Chapter 16. Vertebrate Animals Around the World All my best friends represent vertebrates. Now that you've learned about each vertebrate group, you know about many characteristics that taxonomists use to classify these animals. Who wants to try naming the five groups of animals that make up vertebrates in the animal kingdom? Why do scientists classify organisms? Because there are so many living things on Earth, it gives scientists a way of studying them by showing their relationships. And how do they classify them? They look for common or shared characteristics. What are some of these common characteristics? You've learned that some animals are warm-blooded and others are cold-blooded. Some are vertebrates and others are invertebrates. You've also learned that there are many other ways to classify animals into smaller and smaller groups. The scientific classification system taxonomy uses these names. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species to describe the groups from largest to smallest. When they classify animals, taxonomists compare and contrast animal habitats, physical characteristics, skin coverings, feeding habits, and reproduction. Today, we're going to look at seven different locations on planet Earth, one on each of the continents of the world. We can use our new skills to practice classifying a few of the animals that live in each place. First stop, the American Desert. Here are some examples of animals you may find in this North American desert. The Western Diamondback Rattlesnake the Gila woodpecker, the desert bighorn sheep in the background, the roadrunner, the banded Gila monster, the bobcat, and the turkey vulture. Just by looking at these animals, are you able to classify them? The bobcat and the sheep are both covered in fur, so we know they are mammals. What about the Gila monster? It's a reptile, one of only two venomous lizards in America. What kind of animal is this rattlesnake, which is also covered in scales? Yes, it is a reptile. It is ven venomous as well, and it is one of the few reptiles that gives birth to live young. <laughs> Great job! Let's move on to the Amazon rainforest in South America. Native to the rainforest are the spotted jaguar, the green anaconda, the three-toed sloth, the red-bellied piranha, the blue and yellow macaw, the pink-toed tarantula, and the caiman, which looks like a small crocodile. The anaconda and the caiman are both covered in scales. The bird should be an easy one to spot. The only one with wings and feathers is the macaw. And the piranha should be familiar to all of you. These are Paolo's fish relatives. The jaguar and sloth both belong to the same group. Who can name that group? Great! They're mammals. We can tell because they are covered in fur. As you have learned, mammals give birth to live babies. Does this dark hairy spider belong to one of the vertebrate groups we've studied? No, the pink-toed tarantula is an invertebrate. It's cold-blooded, has an exoskeleton, and is a member of the arachnid group. Let's look at some of the animals that make their homes high in the alpine mountains of Europe. What do you see in the background there on the rocks? The rock ptarmigan lives in the Alps. So does the black alpine salamander, the marmot, the golden eagle, the Apollo butterfly, and the pine marten. Which one do you think is not a member of any of the vertebrate groups we've studied? Yes. The butterfly is an invertebrate and is classified in the largest group of animals on Earth, insects. The black alpine salamander shares characteristics with both a lizard and a frog. Think about how you would classify it. It's a moist-skinned amphibian, but an unusual one that lives only on land and gives birth to fully developed live young. What two-legged feathered animals do you see? Yes, the birds pictured are the ptarmigan and the golden eagle. And mammals, 
Are there any fur-covered creatures in the Alps? Yes, the marmot and the pine marten. The Ganges Delta of India on the continent of Asia is home to swamps, forests, and creeks. The animals that live there include the black-crowned night heron, the wild boar, the olive ridley turtle, the Ganges River dolphin, the Indian python, the blue-eared kingfisher, the mugger crocodile, and the chital. Can you spot the cold-blooded reptiles here? You bet! The crocodile, the turtle, and the python are all representatives of the reptile group. Which ones are warm-blooded mammals? Yes, the boar or wild pig and the chital, a common deer of the area. The polluted waters of the Ganges River have ruined the habitat for a number of animals, and this river dolphin is endangered because of the river's pollution. Only one of four river dolphin species in the world, it is a mammal, just like its ocean-loving relatives. The Ganges River Dolphin is sometimes called the Blind Dolphin. Each of its eyes lacks a lens to give it clear vision, but it still uses its eyes to help it find direction. And of course, our feathered friends of the sky, the Kingfisher and the Heron, are both birds. I bet you've seen pictures of the many large game animals that make their homes in the savannas of Africa. They include the giraffe, the elephant, the hyena, the wildebeest, the lion, the zebra, and the impala. All of these animals belong to the same group of vertebrate animals. What are they? Yes, mammals! Birds like the hornbill and the quilia live there as well. And venomous reptiles, snakes like the gaboon and the black mamba, are deadly to their prey in the savannas. The Great Barrier Reef of Australia is home to many different sea animals. Animals here include the bottlenose dolphin, the anemone fish, the blue-spotted stingray, the box jellyfish, the black-tipped reef shark, and the leatherback sea turtle. Is the jellyfish a fish? Who remembers? No. In spite of its name, the jellyfish is an invertebrate and has no gills. Be sure to notice the jellyfish's many long tentacles. So, do you think the anemone fish is a fish or not? Yes, it is indeed a fish, also called the clownfish because of its colorful markings. And it lives among the tentacles of another invertebrate, the sea anemone. The sea turtle belongs to the reptile group. And you probably remember that the dolphin is a milk-producing mammal that breathes with its lungs. How about the shark? Yes, it is a fish too. It breathes through gills and, unlike the dolphin, does not provide milk for its young. And the stingray? A fish too. A relative of the shark. Finally, let's look at Antarctica, the southernmost continent and one of the coldest places on Earth. Emperor penguins live in its icy waters along with blue whales and humpback whales. Leopard seals, skewer, and snow petrels spend half the year in darkness in this frozen coastal region. Only two vertebrate animal groups are found on the land in Antarctica. What are they? That's right, mammals and birds. You learn that these two groups also share another common characteristic as well. Mammals and birds are both warm-blooded. The energy in the food they eat is used to warm their bodies and keep them from freezing. These Antarctic animals survive in harsh frozen conditions, and they are largely dependent on krill, tiny shrimp-like crustaceans with exoskeletons that live in the waters beneath the ice packs. They are the primary or main source of food for the predators of Antarctica. As you can imagine, living in the extreme cold of Antarctica presents a major challenge to cold-blooded animals. A few fish have adapted in an interesting way to survive in the cold waters surrounding Antarctica. The ice fish has a special chemical in its body that acts like an antifreeze and keeps it from freezing. A few invertebrates have found other interesting ways to survive the cold temperatures of Antarctica. 
Some mites survive by living in the fur of mammals or in the feathers of birds, close to the warmth of their warm-blooded hosts. Now you've seen a sample of the animals that live on each of the seven continents. There are so many interesting facts about Earth's animals. Before I go, let's each share one interesting fact that you have learned about vertebrate animals. Think for a moment about the interesting fact that you wish to share. Turn to your neighbor and share your vertebrate fact. It's been so much fun for me to be with you again. I'm so proud of all that you've learned about the animal kingdom over the past few days. I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. In the meantime, I encourage you to keep your eyes open. As you see an animal or read about an animal, think about how you would classify it. Next time we're together, perhaps you can tell me about your discoveries. Until then, goodbye.